I, I have uh, tentatively titled in my own head this section, Jumping the Shark with the New England Journal of Medicine. <laughs> so, um, New England Journal of Medicine, I'll just start with their tweet, because <clears throat> why, not, why not go there? New England Journal of Medicine said, here's Zach, sex designations on birth certificates offer no clinical utility, and they can be harmful for intersex and transgender people. Moving such designations below the line of demarcation would not compromise the birth certificate's public health function, but could avoid harm. Okay. Um, they link in that tweet to their newly published paper, which is here, Failed Assignments, Rethinking Sex Designations on Birth Certificates. Uh, here, hold on a second. Let me go to this is the paper. Uh, in a PDF form. So, okay. Um, the first paragraph of this paper, which was just published uh, three day, uh, two days ago, failed assignments, rethinking sex designations on birth certificates. In 1900, the year the U.S. Census Bureau created the first iteration of the U.S. birth certificate, nearly all births occurred at home, often attended by family members and midwives without specialized training. During the 20th century, as the medical profession assumed greater responsibility for managing childbirth, it also assumed responsibility for completing birth certificates, a process that includes a medical evaluation to categorize each newborn as male or female. We believe that it is now time to update the practice of designating sex on birth certificates given the particularly harmful effects of such designations on intersex and transgender people. So, um, I am going to argue that failing to include sex on birth certificates, and they do specify they want to move it below what is called the line of demarcation, which means that it is not available as a public part of your uh, birth certificate, and it is still available as like aggregate data for statistical use, but it's not part of your, your, your ID. Um, that, in fact, Doing so, doing this, will cause much greater harm, much greater confusion societally, but also much greater harm, um, mostly to women, but also potentially to men, because so much of our medical models um, until recently have been based on research on men and have assumed that the male model was the one that applied to everyone. And in fact, we now know, and I'll provide a ridiculous amount of evidence here, um, that men and women uh, have different outcomes, different etiologies, different disease progressions for so many conditions that if we start pretending at the level of birth that this is not true, we are going to cause a tremendous amount of harm um, all in service of, a P of, okay, so intersex is real, and there is potentially some real harm done by the misassignment of uh, sex on someone on a on the birth certificate of someone who is in fact intersex. Uh, and trans is a muddier issue, uh, but uh, we will we will get back to that. So I want to read two more paragraphs from this paper and respond um, respond to them. One paragraph. Designating sex as male or female on birth certificates suggests that sex is simple and binary when biologically it is not. Sex is a function of multiple biologic processes with many resultant combinations. About one in 5,000 people have intersex variations. As many as one in 100 people exhibit chimerism, mosaicism, or micromosaicism, conditions in which a person's cells may contain varying sex chromosomes, often unbeknownst to them. The biologic processes responsible for sex are incompletely defined, and there is no universally accepted test for determining sex. Wow. That is so many numbers. Like, I'm super impressed with them, aren't you? They used a lot of numbers. But like I got a few numbers too. You, you got some numbers. I, I got some numbers. All right. So we have been sexually reproducing with two and only two sexes uninterrupted for five hundred million years. That's a conservative estimate. You're not talking about you and me. That You're talking goes back about... to vertebrates. Right. That's like adaptive immunity and sex for sure have been in our lineage for five hundred million years uninterrupted. But that's conservative. Probably sex with two and only two sexes goes back one to two billion years in our lineage to the so-called LECA, the last eukaryotic common ancestor. That's an acronym, L-E-C-A. And maybe that's 1.2 billion, maybe that's as far back as 2 billion, but we're talking billions. That's a lot of zeros for you guys who are using all these numbers and clearly don't know what they mean. Also, we do have a universal way of defining sex. Actually, apparently you haven't been thinking very clearly about this. It's called gametes, okay? If you produce or could or will or do or might have the, uh, or have the machinery to produce, 
gametes that are tiny and zippy, you're male. And if you produce or could or will or do or have the machinery with which to maybe or will in the future or did in the past produce gametes that are big, full of cytoplasm and stay still or sessile, you're female. Simple, right? But that didn't have very many numbers in it, so it's not very sciencey, is it? If it doesn't have numbers, it's not sciencey. So here's a couple more numbers. Sex ratios return to one to one. They do. There's a lot of math behind that. I'm not going to go there now. But that means with all due respect and recognition, as I already did, for the existence of intersex people, and who are very, very, very rare, and the also incredibly rare truly trans people, roughly half of any population at any moment is male, and roughly half of any population at any moment is female. Sex differences manifest in many places. Because, as I already said, these most of, most of what we have known until recently about medical processes and treatments have been done on men. If you start confusing men with women and vice versa and don't let it be clear, what you're going to have is a whole lot of downstream health effects, mostly cascading to women's health. So here are just a few. Let me pull these up. So here's the article. You can just show my screen throughout this sec. We have this article published in 2020 by the prestigious New England Journal of Medicine. Here's a 2008 paper reviewing the sex differences in Alzheimer disease, not just in um, progression, but in etiology, just in, 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 in symptomology and how it presents. Here is a 2017 paper on sex differences in the epidemiology, clinical features, and pathophysiology of migraine. Here's a, 2000, here's a 2002 paper on the biological basis of sex differences in drug abuse. Here is a, let's see, when is this? Where's the year on this? Um, you can't find it. 2013, uh, a 2013 paper on the sex differences in Parkinson's. Here's one from 2003 on sexual dimorphism and asymmetries in the gray-white composition of the human cerebrum. That's brain differences, like actual anatomical, physical brain differences between men and women. And here's one on the sex differences is fascinating on the structural connectome of the human brain. That is to say, the ways in which the neurons are intersecting, connecting. So um, there are no differences. Bullshit. This is ridiculous. And like. I cannot believe what is happening. I cannot believe it. I, I was reading this paper and I said to you, I feel like society has jumped the shark. This is completely insane. Okay, one more quotation. Yeah, yeah. One more quotation from these people. Assigning sex at birth also doesn't capture the diversity of people's experiences. About six in a thousand people identify as transgender, meaning their gender identity doesn't match the sex they were assigned at birth. Others are non-binary, meaning they don't exclusively identify as a man or a woman, or gender non-conforming, meaning their behavior or appearance doesn't align with social expectations for their assigned sex. Again, I'm like so impressed with them, aren't you? So impressed. Babies have really amazingly diverse experiences in utero, don't they? And then, of course, the ones that they're later going to have, all of that has to be captured on the sex on the birth certificate. I'm wondering, too, about those other people who identify as different species, like the other kin, like they identify as elves or sea snakes or something. Well, in order to be respectful and fully inclusive of the other kin, I feel like um, we should put sea snake um, on their birth certificate. Oh, right actually, we're doing something else. We're just taking human off of all of our birth certificates. We're now not going to assume species because some people are delusional and think they're not human. <laughs> That's not how this is supposed to work. What the hell is going on? Well, what the hell is going on? First of all, I, I am shocked to discover that birth certificates do not capture the whole uh, experience that people have in life. I mean, I know. Uh, they're defective documents, clearly. Totally right. shocked. Here's what I think is actually going on. I think that there is actually a central argument that can't be won and must be won for the trans activists to succeed, right? So you're, t you're talking about the trans rights activists, not the different, slightly overlapping population of people who are actually trans. Right. Right? Uh, exactly. Okay. I think the argument that has to be won is that science is supportive of their position. Mm -hmm. that there is no yes. distinction between a woman who arises at womanhood through regular developmental processes and one who arises uh, there through transition, okay? Mm -hmm. So in order to get there, they have to attack the sex is binary 
and basically say science has concluded otherwise, right? Um, and they are muscling things like the New England Journal of Medicine, which we're going to return in a later episode to the corruption of science journals and things. But what you're effectively seeing here is that a corrupted science journal is willing to go along with this nonsense that anybody associated with this journal should know better than. Most of them will not understand that the, the game is not chromosomes, that it is in fact gametes, but nonetheless. Well, it could be corruption and it could be a form of don't, wor don't hurt me. It's the same thing. It's so, but... Mm -hmm. No, I think, I mean, corruption Corruption is corruption. an umbrella category. Yes. So there can be multiple kinds of corruption, and one of them can be motivated by fear. And just like what I was calling the don't hurt me walls that that had all the Black Lives Matter stuff on them during the summer um, in storefronts, um, lest they be vandalized. Um, this is kind of a don't hurt me article. Okay, any uh, New England Journal of Medicine is playing by your rules. Please don't come after us when we publish something that maybe you don't like. Right. Um, I mean corruption in the sense of that file is corrupted, right? There are many forces that distort what you might find in the science journal. Some of them, you know, you could find outright bribery. You can find many things that are shy of outright bribery but function yeah. like it. You can find uh, canonical ways in which it becomes confused. But the point is what you're reading in there isn't what it seems to be yep. because it's been corrupted by some force. And he here I want to try to draw out the argument, okay? The argument is... It, you will find in many of the things that we are fighting over that you never imagined we would have arguments about. There's a basic process, which yeah. is there are two poles having an argument. And what they do is they stamp out the space of nuance in between, right? So you and I are trying to hash out an argument that is in the space of nuance in between. We do not deny that there are trans people. We do not deny that they have the right to be treated as they would ask to be treated for most intents and purposes. We do not believe that that should extend to places where there's an objective fact that requires that you obscure it in order to do it. So this is a... Or you put half the population at risk by doing so. Right. We do not believe that you should assume that, you know, children who flirt with the idea that they might prefer to be the other sex actually are and all of these things. So anyway, there's this inter, there's this space between these two arguments. Yep. And the trans rights activists are stamping it out because the argument that sits there is, look, intersex is real and it is a physically measurable and studyable phenomenon. Mm -hmm. Trans is real, and it's not the same thing as intersex. It may have some relationship to it, but there's lots of trans stuff that doesn't come down to physiological intersexness. Mm -hmm. What's more, it appears to be ancient and widespread. Right. Many cultures have a version of trans, right? And so there is something in which you can say, look, trans is natural, and to the extent that there's any sort of oppressive tendency to pretend it doesn't exist or is, uh, you know, is necessarily about something being broken, that's a bad argument. However, trans is natural, right? It exists mm -hmm. at mm -hmm. some level in many populations, maybe all of them. What isn't natural is availing yourself of pharmaceuticals and surgery and these other techniques. Should you be allowed to? I don't know, probably, but mm -hmm. we do get to decide, right? If you decide that you want to, you know, have your arm removed and attached to your ear, <laughs> I don't think we let you do it, right? So the I point is, that. it's not that you're entitled to any modification of your body you want. Right. So to the extent that there is something to be modified, then there's a question about whether or not it is supported by the science. And so in order to win that argument, they have to pretend that, in fact, science invalidates the binariness of sex, and we all know it. That's the pretense, right? Science invalidates the binariness. And so they are going after this. And, you know, it's a silly hill for them to die on because, you know, no. Here, let's, say, let's say that we, <laughs> let's say that we, we played their game, yeah. right? And we just said, you know what? Sex isn't real. Sorry, we blew it. Uh, we're taking it off the birth certificates. We're going to just assume everybody is, uh, is a blank until they tell us what they are, right? In that world... Some of them are sea snakes. <laughs> More power to them. Um, uh, sea snakes by the crate. All right. Oh, nice. Nobody's going to get it. Yeah, but that's those are the ones I like to give the most points to. Oh, excellent. Yeah. I feel good about that. Um, so I've now lost <laughs> my place. In, you know, it's my fault. Um, but uh, Here, while you're coming up, oh, do you get it? Well, 
Let's get us back there. We but were- well, so uh, I am reminded that this is actually the one year anniversary of J.K. Rowling's um, descent into this into this craziness in which she stands up for for reality. She says, dress however you, this is on Twitter, dress however you please, call yourself whatever you like, sleep with any consenting adult who'll have you, live your best life in peace and security, but force women out of their jobs for stating that sex is real? Hashtag I stand with Maya. Hashtag this is not a drill. That's Maya Forstadter, um, who was forced out of her job um, for insisting that actually sex is real. Okay. Uh, I got my place back. Excellent. Good. So let's say that we obliterate sex. We decide it's not real, Mm -hmm. right? And we take the trans activists at their word, that they're as on board with science as anybody, and the science just doesn't support a sexual binary. And so they're pro-science, anti-sexual binary, because science supports them, right? Mm -hmm. So we move forward into the world. We obliterate all references to sex that are not self-defined, right? And we embrace science. Okay. Science is going to rediscover the awkward fact of sex again and again and again because it's so very reliable, right? In other words, in a world where there was no sex, some bright graduate student is going to come up with the idea, you know, I wonder if um, somebody having a penis at birth is predictive of the content of their cells, at any level. I wonder if it's predictive of their likelihood of getting Alzheimer's late in life. I wonder if it's, you know, predictive of some feature of Parkinson's disease. Mm -hmm. So the point is, you cannot get around the fact that, of you know, you can have a lot noisier correlations than, you know, than sex and still have a valid pattern worth describing, right? Sex is so low noise with respect to how much variation there is with respect to the basics that it would be impossible not to constantly be rediscovering it if you just simply blindly point science at interesting patterns everywhere, (laughs) right? You'll find sex like many times a week. So so anyway, I I think the point is, look... (laughs) That was something like point sex at any pattern, and you'll find sex many times a week. Point no, science. point. So, sorry, point science at any pattern, uh, blindly yeah. at any pattern, and you'll find sex many times a week. Many times a week, you'll okay. keep rediscovering. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So anyway, I think the point is: look, they've just they've chosen a hill to die on that doesn't even exist, right? Either well, the point welcome is welcome to postmodernity. That's it, mm-hmm. right? Either the science is real and functions in the way we know science does, fallible, but basically you march in the direction of knowing more over time, right? In which case, trans is natural, surgical alteration and puberty blockers aren't. There's an incredibly strong tendency having nothing to do with any anyone, you know, designating somebody's sex at birth in which boys tend to grow up into men and girls tend to grow up into women, right? This is just this is the way things typically function. It's not does- God. I thought it was God. <laughs> uh, I think yeah. we, we've gotten uh, a lot of ranting out here, but I think the yeah. point is, look, there's no hill there. Right. Either well, you're but going I mean, this, up against like, science. Like I said, this is the nature of postmodernity. It's like, okay, there's this, there's this hill that the scientists, that the scientists who are standing firm or standing on going like, sex is real. Hello, sex is real. It's literally perhaps over a billion years old. I mean, sex is over a billion years old, but it may be over a billion years old in our lineage alone. Um, and they are over here in flatland or in a depression going like, that's not a hill. Those aren't hills. We're on a hill. We're on the like, hill. Like we got the hill. We and- got the hill and the hill just happens to agree with our idiosyncratic and self-incompatible set of beliefs. Yeah. Right? And oh, by the way, totally delusional. 